Gatorade knows there's no one path an athlete takes to unlock their true greatness. For DK Metcalf, greatness starts with the early morning grind, going hard when everybody else wants to quit. For world record-breaking track star Sydney McLaughlin, it's all about setting a goal and working hard every day to shatter it. And for Jason Tatum, greatness starts with giving everything to live up to the legends that came before him. Whatever path you take to greatness, Gatorade is there to help you fuel it because greatness starts with G. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin, the podcast. Aaron Rodgers coming out in a big way, talking, and we all listened. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin with you. I'm Ryan Smith here with Bart Scott, Sam Acho, Keyshawn J. Will and Zubin's presented by Progressive Insurance. All guests join us on the Goodyear Hotline. The chocolate drops. And I'll tell you, yeah, <laughs> three brothers on the radio, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, here we are. The ch- I like the chocolate drops. You know what I'm saying? The chocolate drops. The chocolate Joe drops. Jay. Makes me feel like a doo-wop group. Yeah, like, yeah. doo 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 Yeah, you like, you, you like, you, you like a uh, raisinette. <laughs> I'm a whopper. <laughs> how come you always get? How come you always get the best definition? Are like you raising? I'm a whopper. It's always, and it's always the biggest one. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's always biggest, the biggest, baddest. <laughs> you like a micro mini pimp? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that's a compliment. That's a compliment. Micro uh, mini. Mini. Okay. Keyshawn J. Will and Zubin coming from you live, coming to you live from the Seaport District of Pier 17, brought to you by Chase and Aaron Rodgers. Really blew up the NFL yesterday, and, and I think Mike T. put it great. Just now, he talked about how he came on our show talking about Aaron Rodgers' comments about wanting a seat at the table. And he mentioned that, and and I thought this was so interesting, he should have been involved in the coaching search, that Mike T even gave players like Chad Pennington a say in the coaching search. And yet Aaron Rodgers is finding out about Matt LaFleur's hiring after he's hired. That is the difference between these organizations. And and Mike T was like, look, Brian Gutekunst, you should be taking notes. You got the answers to the test. Yeah. Now you know how to handle your superstar. And things work differently in Green Bay because there's no owner, right? So it's nobody that can, 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 can like, veto any decision and really talk to, your, talk to your star player. You know, there's no relationship there, right? So these guys are looking at Aaron Rodgers like, you play football and let us make our decisions, right? They, they don't want him undermining what they believe because they have their own philosophy about how they want to build a team. Usually somebody that can kind of come into the middle and play mediator is usually an owner. Well, they don't have an owner there in Green Bay, so I think that's the power struggle that Aaron Rodgers, that Brett Favre is going through because they don't really have an owner who can kind of be the, be the, 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 the deciding decision on listening to both sides. If that's the case, then they're making a huge mistake in Green Bay because somebody should be filling the void to be able to say, we've got to do what other organizations do with their star players. Mike T is giving Chad Pennington a say in who the next coach is going to be, yeah. and Aaron Rodgers has won multiple MVPs and a Super Bowl, and he can't get a say in it. And that's why the conversation conversation from yesterday came up where they asked him the media asked him he spoke for 30 minutes gave a wide-ranging interview and they asked him do you think you're going to finish your career as a Packer and here's what Aaron Rodgers had to say about that you know based on uh, them drafting my replacement uh, J-Lo last year um, I think that kind of put things in motion Um, based based on the way the season went last year there was nothing in last season that may be uh, confident that I'd be back after 21 and maybe even not after 20, 2020. Um, thought we could progress some of those conversations with maybe a greater commitment during the off season. Uh, like I said, that didn't really didn't happen. Unbelievable. Unbe- and we're talking about an MVP. I just want to keep saying that to people. Yeah. We're talking about a Super Bowl winner, multiple-time MVP, and a guy coming off an MVP season. And it yeah. just feels like he's left out in the desert somewhere not talk to in a way that he wants to be talked to. And I say it like that because it's not, I'm not trying to say, Sam, that they're not reaching out to him. I'm saying he's been there for a decade, what, 16, 17 years. Yeah. And it seems like the Green Bay Packers management can't crack the code of how to really talk to this guy, including offering him an extension and giving him a say on free agents, which apparently he's been asking for for years. Well, I would venture to say, because we're saying, man, Green Bay, and what are they doing? And they need need to be like every other organization. I would venture to say that 80% of NFL organizations operate in this way. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's leadership. Dysfunctionally? Yeah, there's not a lot of good leaders in, in, in football, in the world. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm just telling you, like, it, I, I, I watched – I watched I don't know the who you played for, but I had some good leaders, man. I, I watched. I watched the. So looking at. I mean, I know we're not going here yet, but just real quick, like people talk about the you know 
SEC and Big 12, all these things, and realignment. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the new commissioner of, of the Pac-12 gave this interview. And long and short of it is he gave this interview at Pac-12 Media Day and all these things. And what happened was all the Pac-12 you know, coaches and commissioner uh, coaches and, and ADs, they said it wasn't when he spoke that won us over. They said the night before he spoke, he took us all out to dinner, all 12 of us. He invited us to dinner, the coaches. He invited us to dinner, the ADs, and said, let's sit down, let's have a conversation. That's rare. Like Mr. Clean with hair, that is rare. <laughs> it doesn't happen. So when you talk about, man, having open conversations and sitting down with the people who are valued most to you, you get busy. You think about contracts, think about salaries. You think about uh, the next year and the next year and the next year. You think about that fifth wide receiver or that sixth DB who needs to be on special teams. You're not thinking, okay, what, is, what does Aaron think about this? What is, and I get it, right? It should happen more. I'm not saying it shouldn't happen. I'm just saying it doesn't. If you went down a list of of NFL coaches or even well, NFL owners, mm-hmm. I'm venturing to say that not more than 50, 60 percent are going in. I would say probably 20, 25 percent are saying, let me sit down with my main guy and listen to them. People don't listen. And so I love what Mike Tannenbaum just said. He said, hey, instead of getting upset or frustrated, because if I'm a GM, if I'm the Packers GM, if I'm, I'm like this dude. Right, yeah, I know, I, I know, I don't understand that production equals tolerance, but come on, man, like he put this me on dude, blast. He put me on blast. But, but Mike Tannenbaum yeah. is saying, you know what? No, I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to take notes. So every GM, in my opinion, every owner, in my opinion, every business leader, in my opinion, should take notes and listen. What's making this person upset? Now, 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 Ryan, because I hear what you're saying. You're like, okay. Like Aaron Rodgers is out in the dust and out in the dark. and I mean, this dude's making 30-something million a year. This dude just won MVP. This dude just went to the NFC Championship game, not once, but twice. This dude has three MVPs and a Super Bowl. So, like, I, I, I just don't want to play the victim of, like, well, he's can, just you so – can, you, can ar- you, you, you can argue that they've done him a disservice, though, right? Because it's a shame that with all those accolades, they haven't been able to get a roster and get a team around him. Now, listen, it's not – it's part Aaron Rodgers' fault, but for years, they didn't spend money in free agency. They didn't bring talent from outside of Green Bay that wasn't homegrown – there. They did it a little bit with, with Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith to kind of make a run for it. But, you know, I don't know what your experience has been. Like, I only played for two, two organizations, right? And we had this type of transparency. I can remember the day like yesterday, you know, when Steve Bashotti came in, he hired Hardball, and he said, hey, we want, I want to win a championship in five years. He said also, he said every dime, he said I only want to make $10 million off my investment. He said I make my money elsewhere. He said every Outside of $10 million, I'm going to invest everything that I get back into you guys. New weight room. He added a wing on to what we call the castle out there. He, and, and, and what happened was the transparency, he gave the players ownership because they knew the plan, right, because he came in. I can remember, do you want this player? Do you, remember Ray Lewis said he needed, he, he, you know, he's Michael Jordan, he needed Scottie Pippen. What they do? They went out and they drafted Haloti Nada because he was the Aaron Rodgers of the Ravens team, right? I can remember we had players on – on, 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 the, on the Jets, and, and we went to him and said, hey, man, this guy, you know, he's a great player, but he can't play for us. He's not our type of guy. They cut him. And so that's what I'm talking about because what happens is if we make a decision, we all got to make each other right. And Brian Billick was one of the best coaches I've ever been around because he understood that it was a partnership. Yeah, first they're going to fire you, but then they're going to fire me. So I understand that my, that my future is linked with your success. So let's have transparency. If guy, he would tell us, hey, man, if it's 301 in camp and your coach still talking, get up and walk out. I want my guys rested. I want my guys ready to go. And I want my guys to have input. If you don't like what, what Rex puts in, we'll throw it out. And Rex would say it too. Hey, man, we can't figure it out. Y'all don't like it? We're going to throw it out. So I don't know what, what other organizations are doing, what other coaches and leaders are doing, but I've been around some of the best. Ozzie Newsom, transparent, right? I Listen, I gave money back, you know what I mean, before, but – they made me understand why I gave the money back. They're like, hey, man, we're trying to go get Namdi, right? We want to pair him next to Revis, right? So, you know, Bart, we're going to need a little cheese off your taco, man. Like, we love you, <laughs> but at this point, man, we think that'll make us better. You know what? I did it. We ended up with Cromartie. You know, that was a good consolation prize. 
and they never gave me my money back because they didn't pay me. They pay back. <laughs> so, a matter of fact, get Tannenbaum back on here because I'm going to ask him for some of that money back. But, but see, you yeah. owe me about a million. Yeah. But see, that's great leadership. And I would say that's in that 25, 30%. That's really, really, you wonder why Baltimore has been so consistently good. That's really good leadership, and that's rare. I've been on teams where it hasn't been the same. Just to your point, I've been, like some of the best coordinators I've had. I had a coordinator back in Arizona my first couple of years where he'd put in a defense. So it's, I'm a rookie, second-year player, got a new coordinator, knew everything. He put in this defense. He spent all this time, his defense that he thought of, drew up, had all these drawings, everything, and he'd present it to us, and then we'd practice it, and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. He, we'd come back, we'd watch the film, and he said, guys, his name is Ray, Ray, Ray Horton. He'd say, guys, it's not, it's not my defense. What, was this Cornrow, Ray Horton? Cor- yeah, Cornrow, okay, Cornrow. Okay, okay. Yeah, he said. <laughs> OG Bobby Johnson. Yeah, hey, okay. Yes, yeah. he said, guys, it's not my defense. It's your defense. Mm-hmm. So if you don't like it, we'll throw it out. That's rare. That's really, really rare. And it works. A lot, now, a lot of now, egos in, in, in sports. Say, a lot of egos in sports. Now, I've been on the other side, too. I've been around other defensive coordinators who have a different mindset that also works, right? They know who they are. They know how smart they are. And so what I'm saying is your experience part, having, having a general manager ownership that says, hey, we're partners. I've been on teams where the ownership isn't investing in the team. They're just trying to make money. They don't care about winning. I just don't want to lose as much money as I think I'm going to lose. And so, and so like I know to, we're kind of getting you, off the top. Would you like to name names? Not naming names. We're about receipts around here. Not Say it with your names. chest, man. <laughs> Not naming names. Don't call no work in that building no more anyway, man. Who are you talking about, son? Come on, man. The not people na- want to hear it. <laughs> not naming names, but y'all can do deduction. I play for four different teams. So, but but what I will say this back to back to Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. I believe that yes, he's right in everything that he said. I just wonder how GMs are taking it. Will you listen and learn, or will you double down and be like, you know what, I'm not going to let that happen on my team? And it comes down to what you said. Uh- a lot of egos in sports. Can you put your ego aside to win? Because ultimately your fan base wants to win. This is Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin with Ryan Smith, Bart Scott, and Sam Macho. Coming up, why one franchise quarterback was playing safety in his first day at practice. Safety. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got your eyebrow raised. We'll explain that next on KJZ on ESPN Radio and ESPN2 on TV. Some of the news today is, oh, the Texans are open to a trade. I don't understand how a GM even wants Deshaun Watson can justify the acquisition. I think the last thing the Texans want is him on the football field. This is Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. Express is all new and made to express you. From the stretchiest jeans in the game to confidence-boosting suits that feel like sweats, Discover new arrivals at Express. Shop at Express.com or in stores. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I bet it can be hard work. You know it's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com. Get a quote and see how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. Yo, when, Keyshawn, when, when Jay first? Will, and Zubin back with you. Ryan Smith here with Bart Scott, Sam Acho. What were you just saying? Did we miss the verses? Locks Diplomats? Dipset? Dipset? That's a dip diplomat. Set. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, Not yet. The dip, the dip, okay, I want to make Look sure this, I man. hear that. People are going to know what you're talking about. This is in 1990. Oh, man, they absolutely Just know so about know. that, man. The verse is coming, man. Locks okay. versus uh, Dipset in Madison Square Garden. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, maybe I might check that out. Okay. Yeah, All right. Man. All right. Well, welcome back to the show. And we're talking football because it was a huge day in the NFL. Wait, what's that? Oh, we got we got the realest DJ in the game. <laughs> <laughs> we got a playlist. You got I a thought playlist it was coming up right now. We got the KJZ playlist. You know what I'm saying? Take it to your gym. Get your chest right. I like that. I like that. All right, all right. So let me get you fired up then. Let me get you fired up about Deshaun Watson, right? Because mm-hmm. we're talking quarterbacks today. By the way, the Texans. Okay, they're reportedly willing to trade Watson, but GM Nick Casario refused to comment on what the next step might be for his quarterback in limbo. So Deshaun Watson was back at camp yesterday. Okay, he's practicing. Everybody thought it was going to be awkward, but it seemed like everybody was saying, I don't want to talk about it. And and here's what Casario said. He said, we're going to do what's best for the organization when they asked him about Watson. And he he said something really interesting that stood out to me. Between myself and new head coach uh, David Culley, between myself and David Culley, 
We're going to talk about it each day, and we're going to see, and then we're going to do what's best. So he's basically taking it day to day mm-hmm. with his franchise quarterback, yeah. and we all know why the over two dozen cases against him mm-hmm. in, regarding uh, it, some allegations of things ranging from misconduct to sexual assault mm-hmm. surrounding massages uh, that he got. Here, here you see some of their some of the legal notes is. 10 women filed complaints with the police against Watson. He's got 22 civil lawsuits against him. And again, the allegations range from sexual assault to inappropriate conduct. Mm -hmm. The NFL has yet to interview Watson. The NFL is letting him play. He's not still civil, but still still civil, still civil. And 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 still, though, have you ever heard a GM say we're taking it day to day with your franchise quarterback, albeit one who wants out of Houston? Yeah, I mean, Deshaun Watson's OPP right now. He's other people's property. We just don't know who. Right, so they understand. Like they drafted what, what, Mills, I believe Mills yep. from Stanford. Yep. You know, they they brought in Tyrod Taylor. They understand that they're moving on. They're just trying to get a haul for him. You know, I, I really think that I want. We, we need to figure out what the NFL is going to say. Right, is he going to be on conduct detrimental? Because we know this legal case can take a long time. So yeah. he does have value. If he's going to be on the field this year, you know, he's not going to be for 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 you. He's not going to play for you because he wants he wants out. So you better try and get what you can get early. And I think if you're, you know, other teams, Philadelphia, Miami, you have to start reopening those conversations about making a move for Deshaun Watson because if he doesn't face, you know, you think about Ben, uh, ben uh, Roethlisberger. I think he has something similar. He got six games. If you're going to be able to get Deshaun Watson for six games, you better be early to the party and not late because at the end of the day, it, the difference between, you know, the difference is he's 25 years old. Even if he, you, you, you don't have him for a year, he's still worth it if he can get – listen, I'm just assuming that, you know, I don't know if he's guilty. If he's guilty, that's a whole other set of issues. But if you're a team and you're like a guy like Howie Roseman, you, you got to try and take uh, that risk because you got pie on your face because I don't think that Jalen Hurts is it. Well, here's the thing. First of all, Roethlisberger's suspension was reduced to four games before the season. Uh, you mentioned – uh, his issue, but here's the thing that really gets me, guys. From a legal perspective, when you talk about civil cases, this is not something we measure in terms of playing out in months. We sometimes measure that in years. Right. Right? So unless they come to the table, unless and you're talking about 22 different parties, so I think people keep talking about settlement of issues. Settlement doesn't always happen when you got 22 different people you might be settling with. And that's not even considering the police complaints that were filed, which, again, are not measured in days. They are sometimes measured in months. Investigations can take even longer. So what I think is so interesting about this, Sam, is if you're a team looking to trade for Deshaun Watson, yeah. how are you managing this? Like, are you saying – hey, this is a guy who potentially we could trade for, could become our star, and at the same time, all these legal issues could pop up, not to mention the fact that what will our fan base say about us bringing on somebody who faces so many allegations of sexual misconduct, of misconduct? There are so many layers here. We talk about these extremely serious allegations, number one. Number two, Ryan, you've got the law background these depositions may not end until 2022, like February. So, like, there's so much up in the air for the next six, seven, or eight months. Uh, and then also I love the timeline that we, that we put up, if we could put that timeline back up, of when Deshaun Watson wanted to go in January. And he didn't go, couldn't go in January. March, the civil suits come up. I find it interesting how the day after he reports to training camp, Now, all of a sudden, the Texans are willing to trade him. Here's why I find it interesting. I believe a lot of people, maybe not a lot of people, I'll just say I. I believe that the Texans were waiting to see, will he end up on the commissioner's exempt list? Yeah, of course. Right? And and, and he didn't. The commissioner didn't do that yet. And so now, all of a sudden, the ball's in the Texans' court. And Deshaun showed up because he's on under well, contract yeah, on the know, roster. Fifty thousand dollars a day. If he doesn't want to get fined. Mm-hmm. Legal so fees sh- are expensive. So now all of a sudden the Texans want to trade him. Now all of a sudden they're looking for all these first round draft picks. If I'm another team, even if I need a quarterback, I'm still playing this thing slow. I don't want I, you know, three first round. For, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what the suspension is going to look like. And like as we mentioned, these are super serious allegations. But they're still civil though. At this point, they're they're not criminal. They're civil. So right. you look at Ben Roethlisberger, you know, four games. If I can get a, get a future twenty five year old quarterback, you know that that's under contract on a good contract on a team friendly contract for the next four years after this year. I mean, if you don't and you don't have your franchise quarterback, it could be negligent. But he wanted out. 
in January. Right, understood. But they were going to hold they were going to hold his feet to the fire and say, "Will you sit out?" But now you can't have that type of distraction in that building. You talk about 2 years, you can't have that with a disgruntled employee that want to be there just to say what if he comes up today. And the reason we all been there, right? We we've seen these players that come back from injury but we know they got a high cap number. We saw that the whole thing with RG3. You don't want to put him out there in harm's way to do anything cuz if he gets hurt or he acts like he's hurt, you have to pay him his money, and he, has, he can go away and get free money, right? The, the, the reason why he has to show up, because he gets fined. But, man, you can't prove somebody hamstring hurts, right? You still got to give him that check. So I think they're making sure that he's out of harm way so he can't get hurt, you know, because then, he, the, then the leverage falls in his court. So then, because my question is, then what happens now? What happens now? Because if I'm at any GM around the NFL, I'm not giving up three first-round picks. I'm not giving I'll up, give up I, two. I may, I'll still give up two. I may have done it in January, February. But come March 22nd, when all those, all those cases came out in, in mid-March, yeah. things change. And then all of a sudden, now you want these three, I, four first rounds. I'll, no. give up, I'll give up two in a heartbeat. I'll give two up, in a heartbeat. I'll give up two in a heart. Listen, Deshaun, De- DeAndre Hopkins went for two. Mm-hmm. He, he doesn't affect the, 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 the wins and losses like a, like a franchise quarterback. So if he getting two, if I'm Philadelphia and I got two first-round draft picks, and I'm telling, I'm telling Houston, listen – I'm giving you two first-round draft picks, not a consecutive years. I'm giving you two first-round draft picks that you can use next year to improve your football team. You're going to have a lot of holes. You can get two first-round draft picks in a conditional based on 2022. If he, like, you know, the escalator. It's a fifth. It can become a second if he's not suspended, if he's on the roster and he's still part of the You know what I find so compelling about this, the idea of giving up all these draft picks for Deshaun Watson? You're talking about the football side of it. The off-field side of it is we are in training camp right now. There's no fans there. There's no people yelling or booing. There's no games happening. You trade for Deshaun Watson at this point, and as I mentioned before, from a legal perspective, in a case like this, 22 different civil cases, 10 10 allegedly police reports filed by 10 police reports filed by by 10 different people and this process takes months maybe years to play out you have a situation where you've traded all that draft capital for somebody who Deshaun Watson might have to go away for depositions Deshaun Watson we remember what happened in the uh, domestic abuse cases of Ray Rice and all that the mm-hmm. national fever over that mm-hmm. not going on for days but for months yeah. if not years and I wonder if franchises look at that and say the talent is there, obviously. The skills are there, obviously. But what happens when we get in front of 80,000 screaming fans in a hostile hey. territory and the national news media is looking at our quarterback on day one and it's Deshaun Watson, and they're asking, why are you putting him on the field? It becomes a referendum well, on that franchise at that point and their character and what they're willing to do to win football games. And I, I wonder if franchises are willing to do that for the on-the-field stuff. I mean, high-stake poker. That's what, that's what being a general manager is all about. You make those decisions. I just want to make one correction. They didn't get two first-round draft picks for DeAndre Hopkins. You know, they got David Johnson, the second-round pick, a fourth-round pick, and another. Still was a uh, haul. Yeah, still a haul. But, you know, to answer your question, you, you, you look at a team like the, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, they dealt with Michael Vick, right? So they, deal, they had to deal with PETA and all those, the, the backlash, right? And listen, at the end of the day, you're saying that, hey, he's innocent until proven guilty. Mm-hmm. And you, you, I lean on his resume. I lean, all I can lean on is what I know, right, and, 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 and what he's been in his league. And then, listen, nobody saw the Ray Rice stuff coming. Ray Rice was one of the most model citizens, and what he did was appalling. He's a friend of mine. Right, and, and he had to pay for it. But you have to take the risk just in case he is innocent. You, you have an opportunity to have a great football player. And he's going to play for, from some, if he's exonerated, he's going to play for somebody. He better be, you know, if you don't have a quarterback of the future, I'd rather him be me, you know, be my organization. And Jalen Hurts is there for a reason. If, if he has to go away, then we, 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 were, going, we were comfortable with Jalen Hurts all this year anyway. So, I mean, if I got an opportunity to get a guy that is a, arguably a top five quarterback in his league, and he's going to be at that level, maybe even a sand even higher. I got to do it. And you're right. He is innocent until proven guilty. Once again, we'll say at the out, these are allegations at this point. Yeah. 22 allegations, uh, civil suits filed by 22 different women. The reports are that 10 different women have filed police reports. And again, you're right. But at the narrative, it'll be interesting to see if a team trades for him, what the narrative becomes around that organization that makes that trade, given how volatile this situation has been. Okay, so we're going to head to Green Bay. We're going to find out, did Aaron Rodgers win back the fan base with yesterday's performance, or is it going to take a whole lot more? We'll talk about that 
That's coming up next after this Sports Center update. And this is your Sports Center right now. With Friday's trade deadline rapidly approaching, the Yankees made a big move in acquiring all star outfielder Joey Gallo from the Rangers. Gallo has 25 homers this season, tied for six most in the MLB, and now the most by any player on New York's roster. Now, Gallo should be a big boost for the Yankees' left handed bats as their combined 197 average this season is the worst of any team in the majors, and they have a total of 22 home runs. To the Olympics, where American Caleb Dressel captured the first individual Olympic gold medal of his career, winning the 100-meter freestyle over defending champion Kyle Chalmers of Australia. Dressel winning his winning time was an Olympic record of 47.02 seconds, a mere six hundredth of a second ahead of Chalmers, who earned the silver medal. It was the USA's 13th gold medal so far of the Games, tied with Japan for the second most behind China's 14. And finally, we head to the hardwood where the NBA draft is happening tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Former Oklahoma State star Cade Cunningham is still expected to be the first Detroit overall pick. basketball. Yeah, to the Detroit Pistons on tonight's NBA draft. By the way, his former head coach joining us soon on the show. But Jalen Green, Evan Mobley. They might still have something to say about that. In addition to the selections, the intrigue is going to be centered around trades. For the first time ever, the NBA draft is on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Radio. Coverage begins on ESPN Radio at 7 p.m. Eastern. And SportsCenter is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Straight Talk Wireless has rolled out 5G national coverage, and you can get a Samsung Galaxy A32 5G for only $299. No contract. How about that? All on America's best networks. Straight Talk Wireless, 5G-capable device required. Actual availability, coverage, and speed may vary. Mm. Mm. Go ahead, I'll show this your freestyle, baby. Die line, die line, die line. <laughs> Spit hot fire. <laughs> he was like, he just pulled up the mic. He was like, I'm ready. Turn my about to go. Uh, Turn my trouble up, B. One. One. <laughs> the D, we do have a fire DJ, though, I will say that. I know, I know. Right, I used to freestyle good. back in college, man. Hey, next, get me on here. All right, man, all right. right. This DJ Scratch and Sniff. DJ Scratch and Sniff for the ones and twos. All right, Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin is presented by Progressive Insurance. All guests join us on the Goodyear Hotline. In for Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin, I'm Ryan Smith with Bart Scott and Sam Acho. And together and we are. Together we are indeed. And by the way, you know, a couple weeks ago I was talking to Rob Domofsky, uh, who is our ESPN Packers reporter, and I was talking about how Aaron Rodgers, you know, maybe he needs to take a different tact in all of this. Maybe he needs to just come out and say exactly what he wants. And Domofsky and some others actually, too, we're telling me that the fan base is kind of split on Aaron Rodgers. I think sometimes in the national media we think, oh, fan base, they got Aaron Rodgers back. No, there were a lot of fans who said, no, we got Green Bay's back, and we're not so sure about Aaron Rodgers. So this is really interesting. So we had to get a perspective from Green Bay. We want to get, get a perspective on what it's like for the fans and what's going on actually in Green Bay. So let's bring in Jason Wildey of Wildy and Tosh on ESPN Wisconsin. He also covers the Packers for The Athletic. Jason, so great to have you with us. Jason, I want to start by getting your biggest takeaway from Aaron Rodgers' comments to the media yesterday. Yeah, Ryan, I can't believe you started by mentioning Domofsky. I can't stand that guy. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. He's one of my good friends. Um, you know, I, I think Rob made a good point. It was hard to figure out exactly where fans were because there were definitely fans, especially on social media, who were very negative toward Rodgers, but then I think we found that most of them in the silent majority wanted him back and understood that this team has zero chance of winning a Super Bowl if he's not the quarterback this year. And so it was interesting to listen to him yesterday, and I'd I'd love to hear the guys take as players because I thought what was really interesting was he was even-keeled, he was well-reasoned, he was thought out, and when he talked about players that he wanted on the team – They were all guys that, A, had been on his team. They had been his teammates. He wasn't talking about how he really wished they had gone out and signed free agent A, B, C, and D. And then he talked about guys who were willing to take less to stay so they could finish their careers in Green Bay. And that's something that Aaron Rodgers is facing too, right? He's facing a situation where he may not get to finish his career in 
in Green Bay. So I, I thought his approach was very interesting, and I thought he was very convincing. If there were fans, like Rob talked about, that were down on him, I'm not sure how they watched that and stayed as down on him as they might have been. So I know on your radio show yesterday you had a bunch of fans calling in. Uh, give, give me a sense of some of the comments that they made that stood out to you the most about how they feel about Aaron Rodgers and what he said yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I think there are some that did not necessarily like the way he approached things, and they wanted to hear more from him during the process as opposed to Adam Schefter's reporting and the conversations on first take and everything else. But, again, if they would have waited until we heard Rodgers after practice, like, I don't – I think we can all understand why he took the approach he did. He said he wanted to try and keep it in-house. Now, again, there's, there's leaks, and some, I'm sure, came from his camp. So let's not say that that group is completely blameless in what it became. But again, I thought he made a really good reasoned argument for a lot of things, and I thought he was honest. He basically admitted that he didn't get any of the things he wanted. He's not guaranteed the ability to leave if he wants after this season. He's not guaranteed more input in personnel decisions. He's not guaranteed the opportunity to influence free agent decisions. None of those things have been promised to him, although he is getting Randall Cobb back today. So, you know, I think a lot of fans, again, still understand that Jordan Love may someday be a very good quarterback, but he's not going to be a very good quarterback in 2021 given the circumstances. And if this team that brought back 20 of its 22 preferred starters from a year ago is going to get to the Super Bowl, they need number 12 under center. So, Jason, it seemed like he gave them the answers to the test, how they can retain him. Um how is Devontae Adams watching this take place, and what does it mean potentially for his future and his decision to maybe sign a long-term contract? Yeah, that was – so Rogers gets done, and then Devontae's at the podium, and it's the first time we've been back in person. And I almost fell out of my chair because then Devontae announces in a response to a question that he is not going to sign unless he's going to be the highest-paid wide receiver in the league. He flat out says it like I can't tell you how much I love honesty. And that was breathtakingly honest. He he is not taking less. He was asked by Matt Schneidman from the athletic. If Aaron stays beyond this year, would you take less to stay in green Bay? And his answer was flat out. No, I'm not going to do that. So I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of conversations with him in the near future in terms of a negotiation because the Packers, had made it clear to him, and the reason why the talks broke off was because they weren't willing to make him the highest-paid wide receiver in the league. So uh, there's still drama bubbling beneath the surface, and Devontae said now it's time to lock in and play. But again, I I look at players, and and I am a risk-averse personality myself. I worry about the idea of playing the last year of your contract, and maybe you guys were more competitive, you don't view it this way, but I would take the money and the security, and he's willing to bet on himself, apparently, and hopefully for him it works out exactly the way he has planned. Jason, this is, this is Sam Acho. I got a question for you. What would it take? Because all this, this is all a story, at least for me, if the Packers go back and not just compete for a Super Bowl, but, but win a Super Bowl. They've lost the last two years in the NFC Championship game. Uh, Tampa is still good. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What would it take for Green Bay to win the Super Bowl this year? Well, they have to. There's a couple things. First of all, they have been really fortunate. You guys know this. You have to get lucky with injuries. Like the 2010 Packers team that managed to win the Super Bowl with 15 guys on IR, that is not typical. And they have had great fortune with injuries the last two years, up until really David Bakhtiari, their franchise left tackle, tearing his ACL in practice on New Year's Eve. So they have to, they, they don't, they have mortgaged the future with the cap because of it going down to make sure that they kept this team together that has been the back to back NFC championship games. So they don't have like this incredible depth behind their frontline players. Uh, they'd be in a little bit of trouble on the offensive line if they lost anybody else. I don't know how deep their depth is defensively. So they have to do that. Rodgers has to play great. I don't think he has to play, or nor will he play, 
quite at the level he did last year. Remember, he got to go to Minnesota and New Orleans with no fans. That makes that job still hard, but easier. So they need Rodgers to play at that level and play at that level in the biggest games. They need to stay healthy. And remember, they, the, the story that no one has talked about with the Packers, they improved significantly defensively last year, and they still got rid of Mike Patton. So they've got Joe Barry, who statistically, as a coordinator, has not had very good defenses. We'll see what he does with this group of talent, but their defense has to continue to get better, and they made a change of coordinator after back-to-back NFC championship games. Jason Wildey. ESPN Milwaukee, it's so great to talk to you. We needed this input directly from Wisconsin. Send Jason will be co host of. Send yeah, we'll, we'll take some cheese curds if you got them. Jason well, Wilde. You guys can call me anytime that Do- that Domofsky's not available. <laughs> Stop it. Co host of Wilde and Towson on ESPN Milwaukee. You're the best. You're even better. All right, ESPN Milwaukee, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. CT. Also, the uh, athletic Packers reporter, Jason Wilde. So great to talk to you, my friend. Thanks, guys. Take care. All right. Well, we'll talk more Rodgers, but coming up, a former number one pick is trying to win a starting quarterback job, and he's doing it right now without his number one wide receiver. So we'll tell you who that is, and we'll ask, how can you do it? Can he get it done? We'll get to that after Bart has this from Goodyear. Every move we make pushes us forward, whether it's on the track, the court, or the field. Movement is how we make our impression on the world. It's a part of who we are. And when you pursue it with everything we've got, it shows us who we'll become. Every move we make, every road we choose to go down, every mile marker we pass takes us to a a new place and shows the world just how far we can go. Good year. More driven. Hey, it's Greeny, and Thursday is a huge day for change. We've got the NBA draft at night. We've got the baseball trade deadline moving up on us, and we'll have it covered for you from every possible direction. Don't miss it. It's Greeny, starting 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN+. Plus. With no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, banking with Capital One is like the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Kind of like choosing to listen to another episode of your favorite podcast. And with our top-rated app. You can deposit checks and transfer money anytime, anywhere. Making Capital One an even easier decision. That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Capital One N.A. Member FDIC. These days, the sports headlines are full of new records being set at world-class speeds. Well, our friends at CarMax are bringing some world-class speed of their own. With instant offers at CarMax.com. Whether you're looking to sell your car or trade it in at the dealer, you can find out what your car is worth in two minutes or less at CarMax.com. Just enter your license plate number, answer a few simple questions, and you'll receive your offer instantly. It's good for seven days, so you can take your time to think it over and shop it around. And the team at CarMax will buy your car even if you don't buy theirs. So if it's time to sell your car, get on the fast track with instant offer from CarMax. Learn more at CarMax.com. And get a real offer real fast from CarMax, the way it should be. Back with you on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. I'm Ryan Smith here with Bart Scott Samacho. Ah, what a day it was in the NFL. And I got to tell you, the story just kept coming and coming. First, there was Aaron Rodgers speaking unfiltered for 30-some minutes about everything going on within the Green Bay. It's like we got a master's level course Mm -hmm. in dysfunction in an NFL organization. We call that when keeping it real goes wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> no, it went right. Keeping it real went right in that case. Well, yeah. it went wrong for them. It went oh, wrong yeah, for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And then we had Dak Prescott. He stepped out of practice because of a shoulder issue. He says he's fine. Deshaun Watson was back. And, and, and it, the hits just kept on coming. And then there was this story that came out surrounding Michael Thomas. Okay, so we all know about the Saints, right? We know that Drew Brees has retired. It's a new era for the Saints. Michael Thomas, their star wide out, Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill fighting for the starting job. You remember that Michael Thomas suffered a high ankle injury sometime early September, right around in week one. So he missed weeks two to eight. Uh, then he played six straight games towards the end of the season. He was placed on IR towards the end of the season, played in the Saints playoff games. But he was supposed to have ankle surgery, right, in yeah. February. That was a thought. Didn't happen, we learned in March. And he comes to OTAs, he, he's there for a bit, and then in June, he has this ankle surgery. Now, folks, just think about that, right? Drew Brees is gone. You are a Super Bowl-caliber team. You have, you're faced with now starting a new year under a quarterback. You need your star wideout. 
right? And yeah. now he's got ankle surgery in June, so he's not expected to be ready for the start of the season. How do you think Sean Payton felt about that? He talked about this yesterday, how he felt about that star wide out. Not having that ankle surgery as early as maybe he thought. Take a listen. Well, look, it appears we're going to have to spend some time without him. Um, it's disappointing, and <laughs> we'll work through it with the, the other players that are here. Um, but the surgery took place, and obviously, uh, you know, we would have liked that to have happened earlier than later. And, and quite honestly, it should have. Wow. Quite honestly, it should have. And it just mystifies that he didn't know, it seems like, that that surgery wasn't happening. So we called up Mike Tannenbaum. We had to bring RGM back just to talk about this, how the whole thing works. And, and Mike, thank you so much for coming back and joining us on this story because we can't stop talking about it. Mike, the biggest thing for me is I think when we look at NFL franchises, we think if we think a guy is getting surgery in February – if I'm a head coach, that's something I would know. If that surgery is not happening until June, it's not a surprise to me. It seems like it was a surprise to Sean Payton. So explain to us if you know how this works and how a head coach could be caught off guard by his star wideout not getting surgery in February like he thought, and instead it happening now and him looking at missing the start of the season. Yeah, right. I agree. There was a lot of disappointment, and that was a head coach that was really upset with the situation. And what can happen is you get with your doctors, you get with the agent, you get with the player and say, hey, we are hoping that this is a non-surgical situation. And with rehab and rest, you should be good to go. But part of that is we're going to closely monitor the situation. And if at any point we have to relook at timelines, we're going to do that. And clearly either Michael Thomas let it slip through the cracks, his trainers or medical staff did, but clearly this was not closely monitored. So maybe they felt after the season that rest and rehab would get them back to 100%. Clearly when that changed, people didn't react quickly enough and he was really upset about and candidly justifiably so. So someone dropped the ball. Obviously we know last year there was some bad blood between Michael Thomas and the organization about some fines and allegedly some things that happened at practice. So uh, I don't know if that's a residue of this, but clearly... There are some bruised feelings here. Yeah, who is that person who dropped the ball is the big question. Well, well, usually you look at the the head trainer. Mike, have you ever had a player that was injured that went to get a second opinion and went and got a surgery without the recommendation of the organization? Yeah, without question, Bart. And it happens more and more candidly. And with technology now, you can send out diagnostic tests, uh, tests, X-rays, MRIs, where the player doesn't actually have to fly for second or third opinions. And candidly, we always took a collaborative approach where, hey, if there's a better option out there that you feel good about, we're going to support you. We obviously believe in our doctors. That's why they are our doctors. But if you want to go see a specialist, that's great. Let's get the decision right. It's your body. It's your career. We want this to work for everybody. So we took a collaborative approach. That whole area, though, of second opinions and specialists has, has really gone to another level over the last couple of years, and more and more players are seeking second and sometimes third opinions. So, Mike, now that you got Michael Thomas missing, you got no more Drew Brees, you got Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill fighting it out for the starting job, does this team have a shot at all, in your mind, to be a legitimate Super Bowl contender? You know, Ryan, I'm a big believer in Jameis Winston. It's rare that somebody could start 70 games before 27 like he did. And look, he took a year to invest in learning from Drew Brees and Sean Payton. I expect he's going to win this job and win it quickly. If Taysom Hill wins this job, (laughs) this is a rebuild with a really bad cap situation. But I think this is a team with a good defense. And I believe in Jameis Winston. I expect him to play markedly better. And if he can eliminate those two or three really bad throws a game, he's a really productive quarterback. And I think another thing we got to watch carefully is, does Michael Thomas get active? Is he activated before opening day, meaning will he be eligible before the sixth game? Or if he goes on PUP, he misses the first six games of the season. And obviously that could be a big factor in their success this year. Now, Mike, I, I got to ask you one more question about Michael Thomas, because you are such an expert at soothing bad feelings between players, bringing, bringing these guys back in the fold. So what do you say to a Michael Thomas if you're the GM or the coach at this point? Real quick, just to, to kind of get him back in the fold. Yeah, Ryan. Hey, look, we're disappointed that we're here because either you or us, someone dropped the ball. Let's get you 
ready as quickly as possible and have the best season we can. And with Drew Brees graduating, you have to be our leader and you can take us as far as, as we can go this year. So the eyes of the locker room are on you. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. More KJZ after this. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. Fortunately, GEICO makes it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. It's a good thing, too, because having a home is hard work. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. GEICO.com. Easy. 